Celtic have got four players at this World Cup and going into this year's tournament all the headlines were around players that didn't make the tournament. Japan did not call up Ryo Hitate or Kyogo Furuhashi they opted to call up Daisen Maeda who doesn't even start for Celtic over Kyogo in most instances Carter Vickers as well was on the periphery of maybe getting called up or maybe not he's made the squad. Josip Juranovic we expect to be the main right back for a Croatia team that could go quite far in this tournament and after the first match he started and he started with a pretty good performance against Morocco and the battle of the right backs. And Aaron Moy who we know is going to be one of the main players for Australia but we did know coming into this tournament that Australia with the group they have in particular are probably up against it in this tournament. In the video today I'll be going through the report cards for all four players and we'll get some honourable mentions as well for some former Celts that are gracing this year's World Cup. At any point in the video today if you do laugh you learn you like something or whatever please do like and subscribe share retweet all that good stuff guys stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it Now, the reason I'm super keen to really follow the four Celts that are at the World Cup this year is I'm doing a fantasy football, a dream team private league, and I'm giving away signed Celtic shirts as well as VIP tickets to Celtic Park and all that good stuff. The video that tells you about all the details and how to enter and everything will be in the description below. But one of the, so I'm giving away a Celtic signed shirt from this season to the team that has the best ranked Celtic team, basically. Uh, so you need to have one of the four players from Celtic in your dream team and the best place team, basically, over each match day goes into a raffle. So if you've not even entered it for match day one, if you did miss it, if you enter now, you can still catch for match day two and for match day three. And if you're the best place team that has a Celtic player in it, you go into a draw to get a signed shirt from the whole team from this season, as well as like other stuff as well. I say it'll, it'll all be in the video that's linked in the description of this video for further details. But the link to draft your team and get started is there as well. So you can just click and do that. It takes two minutes. It's free to enter as well. Me personally, I actually thought Cameron Carter Vickers was going to come in and start for America. Now, what we're seeing from some of these smaller teams in America is no different. That they've really focused on building this club identity, this kind of uh, cohesion within a regular camp that they call up all the time. Now, the American roster is really deep between players that they have domestically that they rate, as well as players that make the transition over into Europe. Some of the players in Europe aren't born and bred Americans either. Some of them nationalize over. So generally with uh, the US men's national team, the American team, you get this duality of European-based players and homegrown players or MLS players, domestic players. And with the injuries that uh, America had coming into this tournament and the guys that they didn't get into the squad, guys like Mark McC Kenzie, Chris Richards, even guys like John Brooks, who's a veteran of the team. I thought Cameron Carter-Vickers was more than likely going to come in and partner Tim Ream in the defence here. Walker Zimmerman did get the shout. Now, Walker Zimmerman is one of these dominant MLS defenders, and he is like a Rolls Royce of a defender in MLS. He's very, very good. He gave away the penalty against Wales, and he finished the match with a 27-point score. So, Tim Ream on 61, the left-footed centre-back that Carter-Vickers probably isn't in competition with directly. I think he's in competition with Zimmerman, although in my opinion, I think Zimmerman and Carter Vickers might actually be a good partnership. So in match day two, America have still got to play uh, England, of course, and they've still got Iran to play. I'm not too sure whether Berhalter, the American manager, is actually going to change the team too much. And I'm not even sure now if Carter Vickers is going to come in, which is disappointing because Berhalter, of course, will have scouted every player in the team before calling them in. And if you've watched Carter Vickers in Champions League for Celtic, as much as our results haven't been that great, every game he's played, he's not looked out of step. He's not looked beneath the level. And... Um, you know, against Wales, Wales looked very much like a championship team against like an MLS kind of team. That's kind of how it felt to me, the match. And having somebody like Carter Vickers is a bit more no-nonsense and used to the European tempo. I think it might serve them well as the tournament progresses, but I really don't see it. So Carter Vickers finishes match day one on a zero, and I'm not too sure he's going to improve on that. Now, Daisa Maeda made all the headlines today as he started for Japan. Japan eventually run out 2-1 winners against Germany and in, in what is the second most surprising tournament uh, result of the tournament to this point after Saudi Arabia beating Argentina of course now it, I don't think I, I'm being too self-indulgent as a Celtic fan to say that Maeda did contribute very significantly to the overall game plan the reason it was a big surprise to see Maeda start is because between him and then the other guys that came on Minamino Matoma Doan and Asano Maeda features the least traditionally internationally speaking, particularly in must-win games like this. But the strategy Japan played was start Daisen Maeda, start Kubo, start Ito, 
and really press Germany. Don't give them any time to breathe. And then if we can get with a tight match into the final portion of the game, like these key players I'm looking at, Matoma and Doan get about half an hour. Asano gets about half an hour. Minamino gets 15 minutes. Let's get to the last portion of the game and then we bring on the firepower to go and try and win the match on the counter-attack. And the game was poised fantastically. Maeda, he just couldn't hold his water. He scored a goal that was ruled offside and I heard the half-time analysis saying, uh, I think it was Ian Wright, he was just saying like, oh, he could have held his run. He was so quick and he has the pace and the time and the ball was perfect. He could have done it. But can you imagine trying to hold yourself back when you're breaking in the first, like, what, five, ten minutes of the game against Germany in the World Cup now? No, you would not be able to contain yourself. So I feel bad that he never got a decisive action, never got a goal or assist today. He finished with a 32.3 score. And I could very much see this uh, strategy being repeated by Japan. Maybe not against Spain, maybe against Costa, maybe not Costa Rica. Costa Rica, I would expect Japan's team to be very different to the team we've seen today. But perhaps we could see a team very similar to the one that beat Germany play against Spain. So Daisen Maeda, I actually have pretty good hopes of him having a pretty decent group stages with Japan. How decent that will be and how far Japan will go will soon to be seen of course but this for me really highlights something again I've spoke about on the channel quite a lot with Celtic in the past is the ability or the necessity for Kyogo to be adapted or to be put in a different situations by Ange Postacoglu and Celtic where initially you know if we want to play Jack and Marcus and Kyogo if we want to play our best players we need to find a way of getting them on and if Maeda can do this which he's kind of demonstrated already at Celtic, right? But this is against Germany at the World Cup. If he can press like that and be as efficient as he was in this match here, as a centre forward, which he never plays for Celtic, he's very much a wing rotation player, find spaces, move around the pitch, find your space in the match, whatever. Play 20 minutes today, play 60 minutes next week. Don't play for two weeks, then play 90 minutes. You know, we've seen a different Maeda today as a centre forward, so... Is he the best centre forward at the club? No, but can he do an amazing job in that position? Of course he can. So um, I think he gives the manager real food for thought. And, you know, Maeda is already on the record as saying Postacoglu is like a father figure to him, you know. So I think Postacoglu will be very proud seeing Maeda's performance today in that 2-1 result for Japan. Now against France, Aaron Moy started and we did expect France to run riot over Australia. And that kind of happened. Moy looked pretty good. He played some decent passes. He finished the game with a 35.7 score. So he outscored Dyson Maeda even though his team got absolutely pumped uh, 4-1 ever so slightly. He was a wee bit more involved and passing with the team just made a few... Um, you know, the difference between Moy and Maeda, of course, primarily is for forward and midfielders get scored for different points and whatever. But Moy, he picked up a booking as well, which I don't think he was too happy with and I do think it was a bit wild, actually, if memory serves. But Australia, we didn't fancy that we'd do pretty well. But if in a 4-1 loss, he can still get out of there with 35 points. And the reason that's so significant is conceding four goals takes away so many points off of a midfielder as well as some other stuff, you know. So... I've actually got some decent hope for Moy going into the other group stage games as well. Maybe Australia can get a result like we've seen Japan and Saudi Arabia doing. And if they do, you've got to think Moy's going to be involved in that in a big, big way. And also earlier today, we've seen that the World Cup debut of Josip Juranovic at right back for Croatia. Now, I felt that Juranovic, like going into this game, there was some quotes of Juranovic from a while ago that were getting circulated and put out of context a little bit that in terms of the standard of the league and how what tempo you can play at, concentration levels and whatever. And I felt that we've seen very much, I felt that we've seen very much the same Josip Juranovic that we see playing for Celtic. It was very cool, calm and composed out in that right-hand flank. He had some amazing first touches. He made some great runs. He read the game very well. And overall, he was up against Hakimi and Mizrawi. Mizrawi ended up getting subbed off. Um, Zayed, you know, Morocco are quite a tidy team and I felt that he did pretty well. He finished with a 51.7 score, which was the highest scoring Celtic player at the World Cup so far. He's getting points for a clean sheet with Croatia finishing nil-nil and he has just some decent stats as well for, uh, he's won a tackle, a couple of duels and then some passing in the final third and whatever, nothing terribly amazing. But Juranovic so far is the best performance Celtic player at the World Cup. And we do have some former Celts that kind of, I don't know if they're all quite making headlines, but have made appearances at the World Cup so far. Virgil van Dijk for Holland uh, had a pretty good result for him. He looks to be the main centre-back for Holland this year. De Ligt and Timber rotating. Ake is in at left centre-back, but VVD seems to be the Rolls-Royce centre-back in there. And, you know, we expect to see Holland go far. I think for Holland, in terms of ex-Celtic players, I was more surprised that Frimpong never played because Denzel Dumfries by you know all reckoning when I was looking into it was touch and go coming into the tournament so to see him start uh, did surprise me and uh, I think we 
it's quite unlikely now we're going to see Frimpong from the start, I think, in the group stages. But if we do, I look forward to catching that. For Australia, we had Jackson Irvine, the hipster's hero, uh, putting in some good tackles and some good passes in the game against France. And again, even though they lost 4-1 when the game was tight, Jackson Irvine was putting himself around. The current St. Pauli captain, Bundesliga 2 team. Again, in that giveaway I'm doing, the fantasy football dream team thing, I'm giving away two tickets to St. Pauli. I'm giving away signed shirts from St. Pauli by the entire squad, including Jackson Irvine. Um, so he put in a pretty good performance, but unfortunately on SO5, he only did 22 points, which is actually, it's out of 100, so that's awful. <laughs> but probably the former Celt that made the headlines was Timo Weah getting the goal for America against Wales. Now, Weah didn't have a long stint at Celtic. It was only like six or seven months or something on loan. But, um, you know, he did have a good affinity with the fans in the club. He was really happy. He said we were the first team to sing his name in the stands. And he does always, you know, he says he remembers that and whatever. So um, to see him scoring at a World Cup was kind of cool as well. And it does make, and it made a lot of Celtic fans kind of sit back and think, oh, imagine we kept him. Imagine we believed in that guy a bit more, how well that could have turned out. So good to see Timo Weah getting a goal at the World Cup as well. And as we go into match day two, guys, I am expecting to see improved performances from the three Celtic players that took to the pitch already. I think Moy, Juranovic and Maeda can all outdo their scores from match day one. But like I said earlier in the video, I just can't see Carter Vickers now getting minutes. If he didn't start the game against Wales, I can't see you changing your defence against Iran and I definitely don't see you changing your defence against England the toughest game of the group so good news for Celtic fans is Carter Vickers is probably going to get a nice little kind of warm weather training in Qatar with the American national team while he's there unless somebody gets injured or something like I said Walker Zimmerman did give away the penalty so if he did get rotated off the back of that I would find it harsh from like the player's perspective but on paper I suppose there's merit to it Tim Ream did get a booking so as the competition goes on maybe he picks up a suspension or maybe that's a concern to avoid suspension maybe we see Vickers come in. I want to know from you guys what your expectations are from the Celtic players in this year's World Cup. Will we see Juranovic lead? Will we see Juranovic take Croatia far into the competition? Will we see Maeda continue to have an important role for Japan as they set up to be the upset of the group stages? And if Australia do do anything credible in this tournament, is Aaron Moy going to be the maestro midfielder pulling all the strings and making things happen? I can't wait to see all your thoughts in the comments section of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff. Hail, hail, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.